So friends and members of the of the watercolor card group, I am starting about five minutes early to welcome people. So if you are watching this video, I will start the demo and everything in about five minutes. But I am here just to welcome everybody. And while I am waiting for friends, I'm going to get my brushes ready. <laughs> Good morning, Dabba and Vivian. I'm so glad you guys made it. It makes me so happy to see some faces and some fellow artists. Good morning, good morning. From Williamsburg, Virginia, are you getting all that snow and yuckiness that um, the Midwest is getting? From Vivian? Because <laughs> I am over this winter weather yuckiness. <laughs> Good morning, Kim. I love that you're in Louisiana. I would love to know how close you are to the beach because we took our kids for the first time to a beach last summer and we have to go back. <laughs> My oldest is 14, so we do we are landlocked. <laughs> but anyways, it's super fun to see you guys from where you're at. It's wonderful. I love this community. Oh my goodness. Portland, uh, Robin, I love um, I love seeing all the different places that everyone's from. Yes, very icy in Wisconsin. It drives me crazy, all this ice. I'm thinking about you guys in Wisconsin and Minnesota. That snowstorm is nasty. Oh, you are so lucky, Kim. I hope you enjoy the beach, like, all the time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 80s would be nice. I think our... I don't know what our wind chill is, but I know I'm like, I know it's cold. Like we have to put our warm coats on and we never put our warm coats on unless it's like frigid. <laughs> oh, I love seeing all you guys. Thank you so much for joining it this morning. I hope it's a good time. One of these days I'll have two cameras so you can actually see my lovely face and the artwork that I'm doing because that would be nice. But I haven't figured that one out yet. I plan to soon. I'm still new at this. <laughs> oh no, Sheila. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Sometimes my internet is not as stable, and we're 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 kind of in a windstorm right now, so it's not the best weather day. Uh, so I'm blaming it on the weather, and the weather does affect our internet. We live in the county, country area, so I'm hopeful. Crossing fingers. <laughs> Good morning. From Central Florida, Nancy, I I wish I was in Central Florida right now. That would make my heart super happy, but I'm also happy to paint, <laughs> so I guess it works out. Um, yeah. Well, my clock says 9 o'clock, and I always like to start on time, and I'm glad you guys are feeling welcomed in the group and enjoying the time. Uh, I wanted to share some demos, uh, like some landscapes that I just painted uh, really over the weekend. Uh, this and, and they're very abstract, very atmospheric. What do I mean by atmospheric? Uh, I mean like these clouds are like the essence of clouds. Like I'm not painting the actual cloud. Like these clouds are from my memory. It's very watercolory. It, you, when you look at it, you can tell, oh, that's definitely watercolor. That's my kind of style. I like the expression and the 
and the uh, the way that the watercolor can really just blend into each other. You can't really get that with very many other mediums, so use that to your advantage. Uh, this is another one that is just fun. I just like to paint simple landscapes, and I'll explain a little bit more uh, when I paint, but these two could almost be like the same scene almost. Uh, and this here's another like almost abstract beach scene where you can tell that this is the water and like the surf and then the sand and then the distant uh, horizon and clouds, you know, so very simple stuff. And I'll explain all of this. I just wanted to share it with you. And here's another study that I did. I was really wanting a, a moody cloud picture. I don't know if I'll actually send this to somebody, but I might. There might be a reason that I need to send a moody beach scene too. Um, if you have any ideas on an occasion that this would be sent, would be good for it, I would love to know. Uh, but anyways, uh, so I like to start with usually a reference photo or oftentimes when I'm painting for a card and I'm not I'm just painting for fun I will use a book this is a really good book I love this um, painter the artist uh, it's called 30 minute landscapes it's by Paul Talbot Talbot Greaves he is a UK artist and the Iowa watercolor society during the pandemic had him Oh, we, we, before the pandemic started, we were going to fly him to Iowa and to give us a three-day workshop. I think it was going to be two three-day workshops. So she, he was going to be here for a whole week. And then everything got canceled, and he was unable to make it to the Iowa Watercolor Society's workshop. So we did a Zoom conference sort of thing, but it was not the same. But in here, he has different little... Uh, like little projects like four stage projects that that you can do and they're just lovely and I will draw like you can tell that these colors are very indicative to his style and he used a bunch of the same colors that I use I don't use white gou gouache usually but he did and that's okay uh, but he usually paints on a like a 12 a 9 by 12 so I do have to change up some of his uh, compositions a little bit but it's a good jumping off place but I love this I got this on Amazon it's uh, 30 minute landscapes by Paul Talbot, Talbot Greaves and he's such a good guy like follow him on Facebook he will he will post some beautiful landscapes and he'll even I think he even has a couple uh, videos on YouTube but I have not checked his YouTube channel in quite a little while so this is a good jump this is a good reference another reference that I love is Jean Haynes she does a lot of florals and usually um, florals are like when she is associated with watercolor florals but I love I have these books marked all over but she does a lot of landscapes Sorry if this is making you, but so this is like a start of a landscape and it's just gorgeous. Um, I'm looking for the one that I like to paint often and I'm not finding it. I should have had it. Um, anyways, oh, right here. Uh, I've done this before as a landscape with the, with the flowers uh, and the grass, but uh, her, her whole thing is to just paint with use the color to help you um, feel more. I'm trying to find that darn that, that one landscape. This is a nope she is not showing it but anyways I did this and then I splattered some red uh, poppies to make like a poppy field. It's quite beautiful but this is a great source. Both of these books from Jean Haynes are really good. Um, so anyways that's kind of where these are coming from from my experience but let me give you a couple just simple simple ideas on landscapes before i actually show you like how i'll try and paint something like this or like in the woodlands i really love the trail by my house so i might be painting um that as well i'd love to know your opinion do you want like a purple lake scene or a wood trail scene they're both very uh <laughs> i don't know they work great for cards card landscape cards always sell the best when i'm at shows 
I almost I sell animals and landscape cards and I think that's because I like I like them I like to paint them I'll, I'll paint my florals and I'll get enough florals but I feel like when I am doing my shows my landscapes and my animals sell the best so anyways uh, okay I'm going to get down get out just one of my favorite like simple colors I use like brown umber or an indigo actually let's do indigo I'm feeling more like a bluish color and I do oftentimes if I have a reference photo that I love whether it's like a trail photo of me walking on the trail and I just love the light or maybe it was a uh, it was you know from vacation or a trip I will often do what I call value studies but I do value studies for a couple of things there's there's three different elements to a landscape and if you can remember these three I think you can just I don't want to say whip out landscapes but they're easier to paint when you understand these three and that is the simple so if I'm going to do like we'll just do a simple beach scene and I'm going to start with my background here's my background here's my sky okay and now I have my midground which is the stuff like the horizon line and mountains that might be in the distance it's not super close you can't really see the detail so here's my here's my simple uh midground my midground ocean and then I might you know add some water to it but there's my midground and now and this is going to look very abstract but this is also can work for um for our value study now my foreground which is up close like you can see the details of the grass or the gravel or the or the flowers or whatever you know you have you just have a and then so this would be my midground like here's my grass and of course this is very simple but once you understand that there's a background midground and a foreground the foreground is the is the detail part you can really play with and I like using just simple water but this gives me a story where my darks are and I see that I need to make it really dark right up here if this is my horizon line usually horizon lines are a bit darker and you can say oh yep there's the horizon line um, something like that and of course maybe I would dull out the midground a little bit but you got the background the, the midground and the foreground and this is a this is a tried and true way of painting landscapes this goes back this dates back like 2000 years to China actually when the Chinese did a lot of brush strokes uh, they paint with very expressive brush strokes and they came up with this art technique of painting the midground the foreground and the background and so that is a very simple 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 very very this is very simple a very simple landscape but I think it has a lot of potential to it and I you know when you paint this is just a value study I don't plan on really sharing it with anybody but I might if I like it enough I'll go back in and add some details and I think cards that are very loose and flowy like this uh, you can add some ink and just add some doodles and I might do that but that's that's the if you can remember the the background the midground and the foreground in a landscape you will do well here's my background here's my midground here's my foreground and I do that for every, almost every single one here's my background here's my midground and here's my foreground now I could add a lot more detail but I wanted it to be very um, loose and fluid and abstract almost just the essence of like maybe springtime like March ish in Iowa or whatever you know like paint your experiences so anyways I hope that kind of helps if you have questions on on that let me know yeah I do sometimes I don't ever <laughs> tape my my paper down 
uh, because I like to move it around and I just I've gotten used to it curling a little bit um, my my instructor always says that get in and get out let it dry and don't mess with it too much you can always add more detail but once you start messing with it it loses that watercolor um, look to it so anyways okay I will do the trail because I had enough votes for that I love it thank you so much and my dear friend Alice also said she loved the trails so and I love painting trees if you are new to painting trees I would love to know I would love to do like like a zoom meeting on painting trees because I I took a challenge a couple years ago to paint a hundred trees in a hundred days so one tree per day and that changed my whole like landscape experience I love painting landscapes now because I love painting trees so um, I of course do not paint the same one twice usually but I will try and go with this little trail it sometimes works and sometimes I fail terribly but we're gonna try it and I will share with you some of my tips so um, watercolor I used a purple and I have some on my palette but I'm going to use a little bit more. I'm going to use some indigo as well. And I think that is indigo. So I'm, I'm good with the indigo. I'm going to put some dioxazine purple right next to my indigo. And that's going to give me this deep bluish purple color. If you, a dioxazine purple is like my favorite purple. If you have, oh, I don't even know what other. Dioxazine purple seems to be available for almost everybody like every paint company has a dioxazine purple it's it's the purple that i mix with everything um and then i am going to use some this is called earth yellow but it's also called yellow ochre or you can even call it raw sienna and this is a landscape palette if you're curious on the colors it's very indicative to landscape palette painters so I know a couple of different landscape painters have their own watercolor palette and they're all very muted earth tone colors. All right, and then I'm going to, I will mix my green with my yellow and my blue, but another green that I love for landscapes that I just have kind of on hand is sap green or viridian. They're not the same color, they're two different. So sap green, Sap green and viridian, or in this case, this is called oriental green. I will use sap green first, and if I need a different punch of green, I will add some viridian. But I don't think I will use a whole lot of that green, but it's there. I'd rather have it there and use it, and then stop, and then have to get my paint out again. And then, if we have time, I will do a beach scene as well, because I think a beach scene would be really fun. Um, size of paper. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. I cut these, I cut this down to, and you're going to laugh, five and a half by four and a quarter. That's an A size card size. Now, if I were to paint a landscape for a friend, which I do need to paint a landscape for a friend, um, <laughs> I would probably do a five by seven and then put it in a frame um and give that as a gift and i think i will probably do that but not for this demo uh, but if you want to see the five by seven that i paint i will definitely post it and it'll be very close to the same trail type area because um my friend's mom passed away and um i think he would enjoy a painting a landscape painting so anyways okay uh so five and a half by four and a quarter that is my card size that's my card base size here's my card base and it's a four and a quarter it might actually be so sometimes i'll cut them to the card base this time i actually cut it down a bit smaller so i did five and a quarter by four five and a quarter by four um, and then if i were to actually use this is not the card base i will use i will use a card base where it flips up like a tent so this is more for lands for portrait and I'm making a landscape so I will find a different card base to flip up instead of out like this if that makes sense but anyways uh yeah all right let's get started so I use a couple different brushes 
and the I love this brush for this is a Princeton velvet touch a long round at size 12 this one will make really beautiful trees and I'll use this all the time for trees. This is my favorite brush for trees. My favorite brush for washes are actually script, big script <laughs> brushes. This one is a size six and this one is a size six as well. And I will often have two script brushes to basically do the same, but sometimes I want more, I want water in one brush and then pigment in another, just like my florals. And then I have this one to, uh, use more for my foreground for grass and um, different things so I may or may not use that one I don't know yet uh, sometimes I will but let's get started so I always start with my foreground sorry I always start with my background first and for this I start I start with the hill so I will often and this is going to be tricky I often when I'm painting I will just start with water on my brush and I, can you see that I have just a little bit of water on my paper I this is I call this water doodle and I will doodle kind of where I want my where I want my foreground to be and I'll just wet the whole thing down so it's just pretty wet and there's and it's just putting water down now I'm going to take my my purple and my indigo and I'm going to make a bluish purpley wash and it if you notice it's very very bright and I don't really think my wash needs to be that bright so I'm going to go in with some yellow and I'm going to tone that purpley blue down and I'm going to need a bit more yellow I don't really want it to be vibrant I want it to be muted And I'll just mix these two. I really love using a porcelain palette. This is a dish that my grandma actually gave me. Uh, she she was like, I don't want it. And it's a soup and salad bowl set. Well, the bowl is fine, but I'm never going to, I never like make a soup and salad at the same time. If I do that, I'm probably going to go to, you know, a restaurant for that. Um, so I use I, I stole this and made this my palette and it, it's much more useful now than it ever was um, and so with those three colors that I blended I get this beautiful purpley blue muted color and now I can just let it kind of do its thing and I'm gonna go all the way down I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm just gonna add some more water and this is just like the background right like enjoy the process enjoy the paint process i love how it separates this paint is just lovely if you're looking for a good tube brand like a branded that is in tube form i really recommend the paul rubens watercolor um, i like how it separates i can see like some of the purple i can see some of the indigo and it just blends so lovely anyways I do like to use two paint for my landscapes because I don't have to work so hard at getting the right consistency. Meaning like right now it's a milky light consistency. If I wanted it to be tea, it'd be easy to do. If I wanted it to be buttery, I don't have to work so hard to get it to be a thicker pigment. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'm gonna let that kind of just dry and I'm going to work on my I would call it my mid ground at this point now I do want a trail and this trail so with this one I did not draw with my water a trail and it just kind of like didn't become anything so I I made that up with having more of a statement tree whereas this the trail is more of the focal point and so I'm going to try and do that and I think what I want to do is I'm going to come this way so it's like the trail is just kind of curving a bit but I don't know about that line maybe that you can kind of see how I drew with my water now you could draw with a pencil and be fine too I just why do it when you can paint with your water but I think I like the shape a little bit better and then I'll have all of this space to do what I want 
but let's start I'm going to start here on this part of the trail and I actually changed my mind I'm going to I'm going to change my mind again. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it's okay. That's what artists do, right? I'm going to go where that first line was. So now it's all covered with water. I'm actually going to just maybe do something like that. Is it totally in the middle? Probably. Is it a card? Absolutely. Will the person who get the card love it? Absolutely. So I am just going to go with it. Okay. So I wet this one, the first side of the landscape. This is just one technique, but I wanted to get the gra I wanted to get this green right away. This, and so for that, I'm going to take my yellow ochre and I'm going to try with just the indigo because I really do love that green. But what I don't want is a like a bluish. I, I want it to look like a green so I like this green it's not giving me the punch that I want so I'm going to add a little bit of that soft green with the indigo and the yellow ochre and it's still muted but it's just giving a bit more of a punch and that's what I'm looking for okay I'm liking that probably add a little bit more indigo I'm going to make two colors I'm going to make a darker green and a lighter green when I say darker green I mean a bluer green I don't, it is darker in value, but anyways, okay, and I'm going to start, I'm going to start here, and because it's wet, it's just going to kind of go everywhere, which is what I want, and I love, one of my favorite landscape colors is the mix of indigo with sap green, and I learned that in the, in the, in the 30 minute landscape book from Paul Talbert. And now, and I'm going to let the grass kind of just do its thing, or the green do its thing. I'm not going to correct it at all. These are trees that are kind of in the distance, so I don't have to, like, study. I just They just have to look like, you know, foliage in the distance. I'm liking that. And then, once I kind of get a decent shape I'm just gonna clean out <laughs> those edges like I said like we let the watercolor do its job don't like we're painting the essence of it we're not painting the actual subject I hope that makes sense I'll say it again we're painting the essence of it we're not actually painting the the subject if that makes sense like we're using color to depict what we want the viewer to think oh those are trees and i think by doing that we can really get some beautiful atmospheric watercolor happening okay i don't want a line of green going into the purple so i just washed that line off if you saw and i'm going to go straight over just in case there's any kind of green or any kind of watermarks i'm just going to get this whole thing wet again and now, just like that, I have a beautiful, we can just make this a snow scene and it get look really pretty. But I'm going to let that dry now. Now I'm going to go on the other side. And I already see where my, my, where my trail is. And we're going to start on the yellow ochre part. Since this is already wet and I want some yellow right here, I'm just going to add it. And when I'm adding color kind of onto a wash I always think to myself I'm figure skating with the brush I don't want to dab like this I want to figure skate that will just blend the water a bit nicer and you'll get a better uh, the texture will look better okay I'm going to call that done and then right down here because it's already wet I'm just gonna go back in with that with that bluish purpley muddy color this is very muddy but I think it'll still do what I need it to do here's my simple foreground and it matches the background which is perfect for atmospheric watercolors that's what we kind of want and then I can go back in like 
this I could go back in and add you know leaves or grass I like to paint grass because it's it's calming to me okay I'm going to let that dry I'm going to look at the comments I am going to clean up my edges these edges look like like I could probably maybe not <laughs> look like I didn't take my time it'll look fine once I put the once I do a little bit more but you can kind of already see this taking form right it's looking quite lovely and when we can use our colors to our advantage that's what makes what that's what makes landscapes so beautiful is using color theory okay looking at looking at the comments real quick oh thank you <laughs> yeah the this this book is fantastic i think we should all have this book it's perfect for cards i'm sure that's not why he uh wrote it but it is perfect um okay moving on to the other side now the trail i do want to start the trail very light i'm going to do a very light wash i already have it kind of wet so i'm going to take that same purple like that same purple gray color that i mixed and at this point there's like a whole bunch of colors and i'm just gonna very uh gently just gonna paint it and I, I really don't want it to i don't want to lose the essence of this trail so I might even just stop, take a look before I do much. And I think I made my trail just a tad bit too long. At least the trail in my mind, um, like, I just want it to look like it's going into the distance. I think that'll work. I may have to um, change my line up a little bit, but but it'll work for now. Okay now I love this purple with the yellow I love the if you notice I love that that contrast and that's where your eye like goes your eye goes straight to the yellow to the contrast so I'm gonna right away put the yellow right right at the edge of where the purple is and go all the way down and I'm even gonna go make it go into the trail a little bit so it just kind of loses its, it just loses it into the trail. And now I'm going to continue to just paint, figure, you know, skate paint with my brush. I'm going to take my other brush. I'm going to add some water, kind of blend out i don't really want any harsh lines at this point but i do want it to be a bit bolder so that's where i have two brushes and i'm getting a bloom right here so i'm going to leave it because i really like that but I oftentimes will look at the painting and see what the painting needs before I go on to the next step and that is I think a fun way it's kind of like quilting in a way because uh, you can't really add your next block if you don't like the first block that you made right um, same thing with cooking if you're like oh <laughs> I don't really like this ingredient uh, don't put it in or figure out how to change it all right so because I did that yellow now I got to go back in where the yellow is and just add more of this green and I'm gonna add way more than I did the last time like I said every time I paint this scene I paint it a little bit differently and I'm okay with that um, but it does need to be darker And I'm doing the same thing that I did before. I'm just adding more pigment. And that's going to give it layers and make it look more indicative to watercolor. It's definitely a like a labor of love. But if I'm enjoying it and the person who I get it will enjoy it, that's what counts. And even if they are like, uh, thanks, um, I still had fun painting and I learned while I was 
doing it. So anyways, now I can get into my purpley gray mix. So I've been with the Iowa Watercolor Society for, oh my gosh, five, four or five years. And so I've seen my fair share of artists come and give demos and I'm on the hospitality committee and the social media aspect of it. So I, I actually do a lot for Iowa Watercolor Society, but I am always amazed at sometimes how the, uh, how some artists are very like clean with their palette and then artists that I'm like thinking like okay they must have a really clean palette and their palette is like dirty everywhere like they're like I'm like how do you even paint like that <laughs> but um I'm not, I, I think I'm a happy medium I don't have a super dirty palette and I've learned that when I do have a super dirty palette um that's okay but don't go more than like two or three colors because then you start getting a muddy mess so there, there is a little insight to <laughs> my work. Um, okay, I'm gonna let this dry, and then we'll get to the trees. And I don't love, well, yeah, actually, I do love. I'm gonna add a bit darker to this gray. So, but I'm gonna add. I'm gonna. I like this, but I also feel like it needs to be a bit more uh, bluish. It was too purpley for me. So I'm just going to go in and add some indigo. And and again, I'm going to do that same thing. I like that a bit better. That looks very uh, ominous, <laughs> I don't, but I think it'll look beautiful when it's done. Um, I'm going to add some more of this purple right down here, give it more of a look. And that means the same thing over here. And this is going to be a little bit more blue. I don't know. It can be. If I was in nature, I'd probably be saying, oh, no, it needs more yellow. But we're going to go with the blue. Okay. We're going to leave that alone. And now we can work on a tree. And maybe I'll have a tree like right here. And I can already mark it. I, I use my the back of my brush often. Um, like I said, I wasn't sure about the trail. So I'm going to just add. I'm going to change the shape up a bit. And I'm allowed to... all the way to the horizon line. This is, I think, going to work. I'm cleaning off this part just a tad. Okay. Oh, I'm getting some foreground in already. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for just a bit. And so with, with this, when I when I used I I wasn't loving this shape so what I could have done and what I'll do to finish it up a little bit is I'll I'll just kind of curve it I like that shape a bit better than my than my trail but I still have a lot of time I still have a lot of room that I could make it and I think I will right now because you know I can't leave things well enough alone but I always leave a lot of space and then decide, okay, where do I really want my trail? Where do I want my focal point to be? And I'm going to go straight into this yellow ochre and be quite bold right here, right along in here. And because I, I have a lot of yellow ochre here, I feel like it should probably be right here too. Now, this could be a very simple... You know, if you like the purple, add more purple to yours if you're painting along with me. I hope 
Okay. It always dries lighter, so remember that. And I don't, I think I'm going to add this yellow ochre into the green a little bit more. So a lot of times with landscapes, I have to remember my values. Right now, all of my values are about the same. Like if you were to, if you were to look at it, the lightest part of the landscape right here is going to be the trail and the sky. And that's usually pretty about right. I am going to use this brush. I like this brush. It's very, it's a very nice brush actually. Um, it's by Silver, but I love this brush because it's very stiff and I can really get in and clean my edges out and I love that for landscapes. Landscapes are very forgiving. Because even if you don't like something, you can add a tree or a bird or something. Um, that's why landscapes are my favorite. <laughs> because you can always add an element to hide something that you don't love. Um, okay, I've got to leave this alone. Let's go into... I'll do a very simple beach scene, something like this. And I love using cobalt turquoise. And the, my favorite, I have two. And I'll probably just paint a simple water beach, but cobalt turquoise and translucent turquoise. They are both lovely. I'm going to put it right next to my green. It seems to make the most sense. And um, so this color, the translucent turquoise, if you don't have Paul Rubens, but you have other turquoise colors, a color that would be comparable to that would be thalo turquoise. Okay. Once, okay, I really look. So I always start with my skies first. My skies are very, very simple. And I'm going to wet it, and then I'm going to decide where, I, I like to have a little bit of sky and a lot of, like, I a little, for beach scenes, I like to just do thirds. There's that golden rule where if you use thirds, you have a better picture, and that's what we're trying, that is what we're trying to go for. Okay, so for the sky, I'm going to just use simple ultramarine. And I always like to go east to west as if I'm looking at the landscape or north to south. I don't, however you like uh, orient yourself. I, I always do east to west, I'm sorry, west to east. Um, I don't know why, but I just do. So anyways, I will just drop some water right down here and, it, and I'm painting as if the wind is blowing this, the paint. And then, this is just a, a very simple wash. Like, I, I'm using probably 90% water and a little bit of pigment. Like, 10% pigment. Okay, now we can go to the beach, to the water. And I always like to go with my phthalo turquoise, or this is translucent turquoise. And I'll start here. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? My ultramarine was on my palette already, if you were wondering where that came from. And I'm going to add some of this ultramarine right at the tippy top. Maybe it's the sky, maybe it's the ocean. You know that horizon line when it just kind of like fades into the ocean and the sky? That's, that's the feel of it. I'm going to add just plain water, let this water... And do its thing. Add some more water. Now I can go in with my cobalt turquoise, which is, look at that beautiful color. There's not much of a difference when it's this light, but once I dry, once it dries, I'll add it more to the foreground. So background, foreground, mid or, sorry, mid ground, and then foreground. The water is the midground. The sky is the background. And now I can go back in with my, uh, sorry, yellow ochre. And this is dioxazine purple. I love the mix of the two. It really adds a nice, and then I'm just going to go in as if it was surf. And 
just going to fill the rest in. I kind of want more sand. And then I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back and add some more details. Actually, I can't help myself. It needs a lot of, it needs to look like it's going next to the sand. So there we go. Okay, now I can stop. Oh, I'm so sorry. This darn camera. You guys, I am trying really hard to not have this autofocus so crazy okay now i'm going to let this go and i'm going to probably splatter some sand add some more water call it good all right let's go to the trees i think it's about ready for that all right for trees i am going to use my silver this is a silver filbert 10 brush and it was marketed for like it's designed for watercolor and acrylic so um, but I'm going to add some of this purple and a bun and yellow, and this is a very milky light consistency, and then some more of this blue. Uh, I need some more indigo. Who paints landscapes? Who has painted landscapes before? I know I can't be the only one. So I'm just, this is a really thick, almost like oil, but I love painting with two paint because you can get just the right consistency and just the right color. And this is about the right color. You're just making a brown with the colors that are already on your palette. Okay. So here's my, I'm going to start right here. We'll make grass right here. Okay. And I will start, it's very thick. I always like to start with a very thick branch. All right. So there's, there's the start. And I always like to think, okay, this tree is probably 20 ish years old, maybe 50, uh, not a huge tree. I do like using filberts, but I'm also to the point where I want to use this brush. The trunk I use like a flat brush or a filbert, but now that I'm now I can really add what I want to do with this brush. So I always start with a V. And like all my trees usually start with a V and then I just add branches wherever I think it needs to go and maybe study your trees at home my trees we call these weed trees because they're I mean they are very pretty but if you don't want them in your in your yard they like multiply like crazy and some of them are I don't know we have a lot of oak trees and a lot of walnut trees and I think it's because of the darn squirrels, but you know, you, you, you <laughs> I pull probably 40 little saplings every, every late season, every fall. Once I know that, okay, this is a tree. I can't, you know, we don't really want this tree here. Um, yeah, I'm always pulling trees that the squirrels <laughs> planted. It drives me crazy, but what I'm doing is my brush is clean 100% clean but it has a lot of water on it it's very damp and the water of the pigment that's on the tree goes with just where the water is so if I don't want to if I don't want it to be very thick I just use the water and that makes it look like it's further away I'll go and there's just enough pigment on the branches that it will just carry just enough. And it's one of my favorite ways to paint a tree. Um, trees are usually asymmetrical, meaning that there's there's some symmetry to it. But I don't think about it too hard because if I do, then it, then it, the tree doesn't quite look right. So 
my my best advice when painting branches is look at the shape usually trees have three different shapes um, an oval or a circle like this one i've seen trees where they're very much like a square and then i've seen trees where they look more like a like a triangle so like it just would look like a triangle uh so study out your trees or maybe you have a lot of palm trees paint palm trees the the frowns fronds are very fun to paint i love painting palm trees i love going uh to places that have palm trees just so i could study them because i don't get them in iowa i don't get to see them the closest i can come is at our botanical center in des moines and i love the botanical center but you can only be there you know for a couple hours i am going to add a little bit more detail right here it's going to come over the road and then because I, I don't think this tree's alone because you know those squirrels <laughs> they like to plant their they like to plant other trees so i'm going to go right here and add a second tree just right over it and i'm actually going to make this a little bit thicker it's not as old as this tree but like that now I can go in one more and I'm gonna just make a couple like that. and at this point all you can really see is that there are trees and then over here I think it needs another tree maybe up right here it's gonna be a big thick one okay and I gotta make this a little bit thicker. I'm gonna have to add some more paint. And more indigo. <laughs> Does anyone plan air? Oh, um, Vivian, I feel your pain. There's actually a really good book on um, making your paintings not look like um, a quilt or look like it's pieced together. And I can help you with that. I because I that's that was my problem. Uh, give, let me I'll finish this tree and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so this tree's a little bit more bluer. That's okay. I can always add some of that purple in to it and i'm i'm guessing here the light is coming the light is coming from the <laughs> again if we're going east to west is coming in from the east um i don't know why it just is um this is a this is a tree that i wish i could get up closer to so i'm going to add some interesting little branches Again, I think our squirrel <laughs> bared an acorn and there it is. So anyways, um, now foreground, same thing. I like to go with indigo and I like to use that kind of that same dark brownish, whatever color that's just left on my palette. Um, and just, I'll do grass, like maybe it's just poking through. There's a lot of different ways to add uh, foliage but maybe I think this needs to be darker right here so I'm gonna go ahead and so when you feel like it's just a patchwork you got to do more glazing what I'm doing is glazing and that will help with that whole like patchwork I think the hardest thing for me is sometimes like oh I don't want to go over this pretty part that I painted but at the same time something's got to be done uh, so you might as well just enjoy the 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 process and i'm probably making that way 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 too dark but i'm making that dark for a reason i'll show you why so this is glazing putting color on top of another color who did i ruin it i don't know we'll find out um i'm going to go in with 
some of this really bright yellow ochre and go back in here. See how like it looks like I'm probably totally just filled it. I don't think I did yet. I am going to clean up this line. And so a lot of times what helped me uh, be able to go back over my colors and just make it look so it's not like a quilt uh, is to play with my blending. And I do like that. So I already kind of scraped. And since it's wet, I'm going to take that same, I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to add some grass. I don't always do this, but since I already scraped, I might as well, right? And it's just grass. There, that looks more like a trail. I like that. Okay. This is very more bluish. I'm afraid that if I add too much purple, it's going to look funky. Maybe not. I'm going to go back in. So just glaze over your watercolor to make it look like it's blended a bit more. And then I think you will find that it won't look so like a patchwork quilt. But the book that I'm referring to that has helped me with this, I'll show you. Okay, so that one's about done. It is very moody. It is very indicative to watercolor. I'm excited to see if this will actually dry as dark as it looks, as it looks very, very dark. But I really like my trees. I love this trail. I think this is going to make for a really pretty card and I think that if I wanted to make it bigger like a five by seven I could now if I wanted to I could take a little bit of extra time and I'm darn indigo I use indigo so much it's like it's I don't know why but I just love indigo and so I'm going to go ahead and add some more of that purpley bluish darkish color and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do a couple lines where the branches are I don't my plan is to not do every line but I do want a couple where it looks like I'm I'm like maybe keeping the light and again you could spend hours on a landscape I will say I find it very <laughs> therapeutic and I'll spend an hour on one and think, oh my gosh, it's been an hour. I thought they've only been painting for five minutes. Uh, okay, so something like that. I'm just outlining the tree again just to give it more depth because you can see that there's a lot of branches that look like it's in the um, midground instead of in the foreground and I consider the tree to be in the foreground. So I have to go back in with my lines and just add a little bit more to it. But I'm going to let that dry. Here is the dry beach scene and I would just add wherever this color is, I would just add more to it and then blend it out. So what I mean is I would glaze over the color. So here's my phthalo turquoise or translucent turquoise. And I'm going to just make a very bold line right here, right underneath the ultramarine where I added it the second time. And I'm going to let that sit. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise right here, not making a full line. And I, I don't, I just feel like putting it somewhere right there. Okay. Now, one side of the edge is going to get blended. So you see a one hard edge and you see a soft edge. A soft edge is when you add water to one of the edges to just let it kind of bleed into the water. And I kind of like that, that white wave, but I feel like that's just a little bit too much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cobalt. I'm going to stick it right here. I still want to keep that white. Don't lose that white. When, when you're painting waves, don't lose the white. But, like, when I went to the ocean, I, so we went to Cocoa Beach last year. 
there's other beaches that you love let me know <laughs> because i am all about going to the beach so is my daughter i'm going to add this sap green right onto this cobalt turquoise just to give it a little bit more depth something to that effect i just love the beach i love painting the beach i love being at the beach all of it okay this yellow ochre is probably a little bit too much but that's okay this is the back of a card and i'm okay with using it but i'm going to splatter and i do not want to get my other paintings wet so i'm going to do a little bit more purple like straight purple and there's my there's my beach okay that looks very stark so let's clean that up and I don't know if it really matters what kind of brush you're using for this just as long as you're enjoying it um, and I don't want every bit of splatter like I want it to look sandy yes but I don't think my goal here is not to say oh yep she did splatter so I will take my time and just kind of go where the splatter is and just kind of blend it into the to the beach like you you can have a little bit of splatter but you don't necessarily need people to be like oh yeah she definitely splattered there um at least I don't and I like that I think that is a really lovely simple beach landscape okay let's look at our I'm looking for my there we go okay it is about dry and it is looking good if I were to do anything else I would take this foreground okay I'm going to do something else for you because I really am feeling it. Um, I like that purple. I'm also going to take this filbert brush. This is why I love this brush. And I'm going to get some of that indigo. I'm just going to get, like, basically I'm looking for a brownish purpley color and I'm getting it right there. Okay, now I'm going to, I think I've done this before. It's a dry brush technique. And I'm going to go in and very lightly just add some texture just like that and I'm even going to bring it into the to the gold there we go that is looking really cool that looks like you do not want to step into that grass <laughs> you don't know what's in there um, now I can go back in and this is a bit more yellow and on one side of the trail, you can just kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna, I just want to add a little bit of form to that. And now I'm going to take my breath, my water. So I just added some paint and now I'm going to just kind of blend it into the trail so it looks like there's a little bit more dimension and I'm going to do the same thing just like that okay that looks good and I think I'm going to call it done there is an illustrated version of a trail that's by my house and we use complementary colors we used an earth tone palette we painted simple, simple elements to create the essence of, of a landscape, a very nice, simple landscape. So the other book that I love that I, that helped me was this book. Um, it's called Watercolor Painting from Tom Hoffman, sorry, Tom Hoffman. Um, it's a big one. It's a big book. I think it's probably like at least a nine by 12 and it's very, it's written very professional. Like he's a professional artist, but you can already tell like his watercolor brushstrokes are just 
very expressive. It reminds me of, um, why can't I think of his name? Um, the artist that worked with Van Gogh, but then went to an island to be by himself. It'll come to me. Anyways, he's awesome. I love his, I love his watercolor, or I love his acrylics that he does, but look at some of the, I mean, it's very simple, but it helps you not feel like you are like right here it looks like it could be patchwork but it's not it's just very expressive and i love his style so anyways this is a great book if you're looking for it it's watercolor painting um by tom hoffman and he's a great landscape artist the other artist that i like to follow or that learn from is tim, sorry um tom holter h-o-l-t-e-r and he is a American watercolor artist who has been titled an impressionist landscape by the American Watercolor Society. So he is, and he came to Iowa Watercolor Society last fall and taught us a bunch about landscape. I loved his workshop. Uh, so lots of ways to learn. Uh, another one that I like is Alexis Levine, her landscapes are beautiful and that's how I've learned watercolor is through Alexis and she does lovely landscapes. Her colors are just spot on. So anyways, I hope this helps. I feel like this was a wonderful demo. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read through the, land the comments real quick. If you're still here, awesome. I will try to reply back to them um, later. But, uh, Deborah, I like what was it? Sorry, I'm looking. Um, I like what you said about Jean Haynes. Um, yeah, her, her watercolor is very atmospheric, and I love her. I love her stuff. Uh, and then, uh, Sheila, thanks for um, saying that about beach scenes. Yeah, it, it took me a while. Like, if, if I went back to see all of my different beach scenes, what changed what made me like fall in love with beach scenes was that turquoise and sometimes and i thought for sure the green was gonna totally kill the beach scene but it actually made the water look beautiful so i'm with you on that <laughs> uh yeah i started with florals sheila and i still love painting florals but there's something about landscapes that have totally enamored me and I just love landscapes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you guys came. Um, thank you. I really love painting the beach scene as well. Beaches, like I paint them, I, I just love to paint. I paint every day something, even if it's not perfect, I still say, okay, it's mine. <laughs> Um, anyways, you guys are very welcome. I gotta get going. My husband needs me at Menards, our home improvement store. We got a, we got a house project this weekend. Hopefully the mother cooperates. So, yay! <laughs> anyway, so I will talk to you guys later. Hopefully we can see some landscape paintings in our group. I'd love to see some landscapes or even just some elements of trees or grass or whatever. It's, it's a fun time. So anyways, take care, have fun painting, and I'll talk to you next Thursday. Next Thursday, we are doing a mixed media card. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. And that's all I'm going to say because I'm super excited and I don't have it. I don't have the demo. I don't have the example quite ready yet, but it's going to be awesome. So anyways, all right. I will talk to you guys next Thursday. Talk to you later.